Hello, everyone. My name is Oksana. It's Road to Edwards, Weekly Edwards Insider, the 42nd. We deliver the news about the creation of our project Edwards. And Tokugawa-san, could you please open the session? Yeah. Thank you, Oksana. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Hiro Tokugawa. Uh, now, uh, I think this is going to be the uh, last section on the uh, life of the Shogun, as I will start to talk a bit about the uh, more exciting aspect of life in Edo Castle, which is the Ooku, but more on that, well, on that later. So uh, now uh, it was the, uh, you see, the Shogun was not a monarch. Uh, so my great grandfather explained to foreigners that the Shogun was like a hereditary prime minister. So the emperor has always been Japan's monarch, uh, head of state. Uh, but uh, Tokugawa Japan was constructed on a hereditary principle. So not only the shogun, but all the daimyo and, uh, well, everyone followed in his father's footsteps. And then when he is not good enough, then uh, so I'm better would be adopted so that the family business goes on. Uh, this principle uh, was applied to all classes. Okay, so samurai, uh, farmer, uh, or, bur or bourgeois, uh, chonin. So, uh, and then, but, and then the shogun is the top dog. Uh, well, there's only one shogun. There are so many daimyo, but there's only one shogun as, well, naturally, he is the military commander. So, uh, whether the shogun could produce an heir uh, was pretty important. And then uh, th there were so many adoptions. My father was adopted, for instance, uh, by his gra his grandfather. Uh, and my, the 16th shogun was adopted by the 15th shogun, legally speaking. Uh, I don't think the 15th shogun wanted that as he had his own sons. But And then uh, the 15th shogun was ado adopted by the uh, 14th shogun. The 14th shogun didn't like the 15th shogun. So he wanted to uh, appoint who would later become the boy who would later become the 16th uh, head of the Tokugawa family as the 15th shogun. But in fact, um, the, the boy was only three years old. So uh, the 15th shogun uh, who would end Tokugawa rule came to power uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, so as early as the fifth shogun, uh, he was adopted. Uh, the fourth shogun, shogun didn't have children. So, but. Uh, and then at the same time, they, all the shoguns are supposed to have been receiving the best medical care and they're supposed to have been eating the best food. Uh, so some had great reproductive power, others didn't. So only the uh, law of average uh, would work. The first shogun, uh, Tokugawa Ieyasu, had 16 children. And uh, one of them uh, would stay a Matsudaira. So Matsudaira is the family name before we assume Tokugawa, which is a, an ancient Genji a Minamoto uh, clan, me, uh, a member of the Minamoto clan. So, and would become the Lord of Fukui, a very big daimyo. And then uh, his fourth or fifth son is the uh, second shogun. He and Ieyasu had to uh, kill his first son and his only uh, official wife by the order of Oda Nobunaga. Yes, Nobunaga was a psychopath. Uh, so that that tragedy took place. And uh, so my family, I don't think ever forget, forgave the, uh, well, when we were in power, ever forgave the uh, Oda family. So they stayed a very small daimyo throughout the uh, Tokugawa period. Uh, and then coming back to Ieyasu, he had 16 children, but uh, children were also a tool uh, for di diplomacy. See, or on, in sustaining relationships with other important families. So um, he further adopted 22 other children. So by the time uh, the Tokugawa shogunate, uh, well, took its shape, I think most major daimyo were uh, in one way or another related to the Tokugawa. And of the 16, uh, well, like let's say half of them survived and uh, th three of them would become major Tokugawa daimyo. So the Lord of Nagoya, the Lord of Wakayama and the Lord of Mito. The second shogun was naturally Yasu's son and then Lord of Fukui too, although he, his name, uh, his family name was Matsudaira. And then the second shogun had eight children. The thing is that uh, the second shogun uh, married like a niece of Oda Nobunaga. So, uh, and well, Oda had mm, a lot of charisma still uh, at the beginning of the Tokugawa. So uh, you see, he 
probably well officially uh he could not have a con have a second or third wife uh well uh God, well how should i say and popular history has it is that uh he was so afraid of his wife but uh that was probably not the case but and then the one out of wedlock uh affair produced uh, one of the most important daimyo families which is the Matsudaira of Aizu and uh since well and the little boy was nearly killed by Hidetada's wife. So, uh, and that is why he hates, uh, he didn't want a keep tower in the Edo castle. I think I explained this some time ago, okay? And then after that, uh, it would look like a nuclear family, a nuclear family not being radioactive, but uh, with like one or two children. And uh, some had zero as like the uh, seventh shogun died at eight years old. So naturally there's no heir there. Uh, the 11th shogun is very famous as he had 53 children. And uh, what's very rare is that most of them survived into adulthood. So, uh, and when there are so many offsprings and it's the uh, most powerful man in Japan, uh, so disposing of these offsprings. So um, you see the wedding would become very expensive and the uh, daimyos who would receive a daughter would have to pay for that. Like I think the uh, gate of Tokyo University in Hongo, I think that is when the shogun's daughter uh, married the lord of Kaga, a Maeda-san. So, so this, this uh, and uh, the 11th shogun also stayed in office like 50 years uh, and probably this is like, you know, Ludwig XIV of France uh, or the uh, Franz Josef II in the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. Uh, so when Tokugawa samurai after the Meiji Restoration thought of the Tokugawa period, uh, the 11th shogun's time was the peak of Tokugawa Japan. But uh, if you look with lots of hindsight and uh, some good sense, uh, this kind of, uh, well, uh, how should I say, uh, so many children, so much spending, so much luxury, naturally, that was the beginning of the end, okay, and, but, uh, and then, so, but of the 53, uh, not all were, like, uh, well, useless, so like, for instance, one of them, who would become the Lord of Tsuyama, it's a tiny town in Okayama that most people would never visit in their lives, uh, would, become the advisor to the Tokugawa shogunal family after the 15th shogun uh, left office. And, and then, so the uh, 12th shogun, which is one of the 53 children of the 11th shogun, uh, also had had a lot, 27. So a little bit more than half, uh, but only one of them uh, grew up. And that would be the 13th shogun who died without children. So that's that so uh what we make of this all i can say is that well this is what things were like before modern medicine i think the story was not so different in uh well uh france well pre-revolutionary france or um, early modern britain or even in china oh and very important uh so why so many children because the shogun could uh mate that, that would be the word mate with as many women as he wanted to as long as she is working in the org and all and the uh, all where the shogun, his family, and well, shogun's of formal wives, wife's quarters. Uh, but the formal wife usually would come from a very important uh, Kyoto nobility family. But if a child is born between the official wife and the shogun, then her family would have a lot of influence. So uh, that would never happen. Uh, maybe there were children, maybe there were children, but uh, they would never uh, reach adulthood. Uh, well, out of natural causes or of uh, man-made causes, I'm not sure. And uh, yes, and the 15th shogun, uh, his uh, mother uh, came from the imperial family. And so, and that's how the shogun's family, the, the uh, Tokugawa shogun had ended. So there is some, some sense to that uh, thinking. So, uh, so, uh, let me repeat, uh, I think so, you see, not letting the son of the official wife uh, become the shogun uh, made lots of sense when we see this conclusion to uh, Tokugawa history. Uh, and I think that would be enough for this week. And uh, so thank you, Oksana, that would be enough. Uh, thank you very much, Tokugawa-san. And uh, JJ, could you please uh, join us? Sure. 
Thank you, Oksana. Hello, everybody. Uh, we have maybe we have noticed that uh, great news coming to all of the group players. The news is uh, Binance is coming to Japanese market. It's really, really amazing and significant anyway. And um, I think most of the crypto players looking forward to having you know Binance exchange in Japan. And then the thing is um, basically so far, FSA in Japan always you know reject, always reject Binance because um, because of the regulation. So Bi Binance has uh, basically no no license to deal with crypto exchange in Japan, but Binance is too big too big globally. So most of the Japanese crypto players always, you know, log on to the Binance and then they try to make an account. And I suppose, I don't know, 500, uh, you know, 1 million users definitely using Binance, although they are prohibited. Because FSA can ju just, uh, you know, uh, prohibit uh, Binance from, you know, uh, promoting in Japan. But for user side, they have a right to open up, you know, crypto account, right? So the FSA and Binance was, you know, has been, fighting to each other so long so far. But finally, FSA may be approved that Binance is gonna uh, you know, take over some kind of licensed company in Japan, and then they are ready to come into our space. I think it's good news, supposed to be. And then if Binance can follow the regulation of Japan, uh, I think crypto market is gonna be more healthy because uh, Japanese guideline and re regulation is the best and crazily and crazily in, how to say, hardest one in Japan, mm. in, in global, crazy, crazy. Because I have experience of, uh, uh, you know, having that license, it takes more than two, one year and a half, and it mm. costs four, 4 million or 5 million for, per year. It's crazy anyway, so strict. Means if Binance can uh, fit this regulation for global market, Japan is supposed to be like a huge hub for all of the crypt, crypt players and all of the crypto projects, which is maybe also nice for, our project that was as well. This is one thing I'd like to share. And then the other thing is uh, in terms of metaverse, uh, always we are getting uh, great advice from Ihiro san. It's so exciting and interesting and creative. And then the challenge is always hard to implement those items into our space. And then I'm always watching the metaverse space. And then I was supposed to, I was so surprised to see uh, the sandbox and uh, I thought maybe uh, this central land, I guess. Yeah, uh, both of the space, uh, the valuation, I mean, is maybe more than 1.5 billion or something, so huge. But active users per month, oh, sorry, per, per day maybe, per day is supposed to be uh, 30, 38 people, 38 users mm -hmm. per day for, for Sandbox, and then uh, 500 something for this central land, or, or could be opposite, but maybe around that. Means that maybe uh, even the users of Metaverse cannot, you know, uh, cannot access to that those types of space every day because there is nothing. There is no commercial. No, there is no commercialized one, and there is no merchandise, and there is no uh, incentives for them to, you know, come into that space. And also the tech side, uh, it's really challenging for Metaverse space to have uh, many many types of users at once. So maybe around fifty or hundred. Is still fine, but more than 1,000 or 2,000 or 10 million or something, then uh, the server sites is going to be super, you know, high pressured by the user's ecosystem. So that's our challenge as well. So my idea is, um, I think we are going to split, you know, uh, for metaverse space and gaming space. And then we'd like to implement all of the ideas uh, from Yehiro san to, you know, gaming space. But this space is split from the uh, metaverse space. So the pressure of pressure to the server is going to be uh, declined. I mean, much much better user interface we can provide. So what I can promise is uh, definitely the creative of Metabus is such a beautiful and a nice one. It's going to be kept. But once the user come into the gaming space, it's going to be, you know, uh, show, uh, another screen show up to the users and then the user can play in that space. So that maybe the server side and then the Metabus side can, uh, you know, Sustain can be more sustainable compared to other space. So we are we're trying to you know implement those type, types of things. But anyway, uh, by this year end, we can provide product this one version, and then the user can choose avatars and jump into the uh, space so that they can see El Castle 
and then uh, some some of the garden place and of course cherry blossoms maybe the season is a bit, a bit different but supposed to be exciting uh so stay tuned we are we are trying to do our best anyway thank you so much thank you very much tj and uh, mitsushi could you please join us uh, hello, thanks, Oksana. So after the FTX crisis, a lot of users uh, withdraw their capital money and uh, deposit that capital into decentralized exchange. So that means uh, a lot of people no longer trust centralized exchange because there is the risk of bankruptcy and risk of chain destruction because a lot of centralized exchange uh, jointly take care of users' account and money. Uh, that was found out, found it out, found out. So a lot of users uh, lost trust into centralized exchange, and they started to use uh, decentralized exchange instead. Decentralized exchange means there's no one sort of company taking care of exchange. It's, it's sort of the exchange is uh, you know, supervised with a DAO system or decentralized system. There's no one person taking care of that exchange. It, it sounds like very strange to traditional uh, financial people, but this kind of decentralized exchange model has been very active uh, in the last two years. Uh, for example, Uniswap uh, V3, a lot of users uh, already uh, put money and uh, engage with transaction in decentralized exchange. That means a lot of centralized exchange uh, have lost customers, transactions, and also confidence. Uh, then some exchanges hesitate to list new tokens. And the other way around, some exchanges are aggressive to list new tokens as they expect to generate new revenue. So now is great timing for us at Ed Advice Project to strategically negotiate with uh, crypto exchanges. And maybe we can uh, you know, have a sort of good advantages, a good uh, sort of conditions for listing new tokens. So for listing uh, Zeni and Koban, I think now we need to set a, a new strategies to negotiate with crypto exchanges. That's what I'm thinking uh, these days. And moreover, if a lot of users uh, you know, have already started uh, transaction in decentralized exchange, maybe we should sort of provide liquidity of uh, our tokens into decentralized exchange as well. Maybe, uh, particularly decentralized exchanges, namely are called DEX, D-E-X these days, and centralized exchanges called SEX, C-E-X. So we need to understand our users' demographies depending on uh, CEX and DEX. Uh, this is very important token strategy for many uh, metaverse projects these days. And moreover, as uh, you know, the previous speaker explained that the Binance uh, has determined to expand their enterprise in Japan as well. So a lot of Japanese users will uh, newly engage with transaction of cryptocurrency in uh, Binance exchange, or maybe uh, they will also pay attention to other uh, new token projects as well. So maybe it's great timing for us as well to gain Japanese users even further, especially uh, newly coming crypto users uh, might be very aggressive for that kind of trading. Uh, therefore, I think uh, now we, we have seen great or we have seen a lot of interesting news every week. Uh, so this speed is the nature of cryptocurrency and Web3 industry, I think. So I'm enjoying uh, you know, analyzing those kind of phenomena every week. And I'd like to sort of make a contribution to this project by analyzing those uh, new trend and news. Uh, this is all for me today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mitsushi. And uh, uh, hello again, Martin. Hello. Hello. C could you please join today's session as well? Yeah. Sure. Um, so, um... I would like to talk about the the idea of, of dynasties and, and building a, a, a dynasty or a dynasty. I think the English and the Americans pronounce it different ways, but um, I thought that perhaps this could occupy a different um, space between the metaverse experience and the gaming experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and this relates particularly to the passage of time within the 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 metaverse. So um, I'm a fan of what they call in Japanese table talk RPG. Mm -hmm. In, in uh, English we say, we say tabletop. But somewhere in lost in translation, tabletop became table talk. So specifically this is Dungeons and Dragons. So it doesn't rely on uh, components of the game, but it's it's a pen and paper and an imagination game. 
So in Dungeons and Dragons, when you're not at the table playing with your friends, you, you will go home and uh, let's say a week or a month um, passes between um, sessions where the players meet. Um, an amount of time passes in the imaginary world in which the players are, are participating. Um, and recently I've been watching a, a, an alternative history sci-fi series on Amazon called Takaishiro no Otoko, The Man in the High Castle, um, which is quite bizarre, but it offers an alternative World War II outcome where America captures the eastern half of the United States and Japan, uh, you know, invades the western half and it's um, occupied by, by this. Uh, you know. So anyway, there were people switching between timelines and I just thought this might be very interesting for the Edoverse. So perhaps the people who would who are fascinated in this idea of building a, a dynasty and the ultimate achievement is to have 53 children and then who do the children where it sort of also reminds me of the 19th century Jane Austen or Anthony Trollope novel where the entire preoccupation of people is who their children are going to marry who's the ugly daughter going to marry you know this I think is, is fascinating you know obviously so much of the character and the personalities is lost because we don't have, you know, very accurate records, but just to fantasize about what, mm -hmm. you know, the, the political plays and machinations, the Machiavellian, mm -hmm. you know, uh, stratagems of, of the, the shogun, and the, that is, is fascinating to me. So perhaps we could have a version of the metaverse where time passes mm -hmm. incredibly quickly. So Whereas in a combat game, you know, you, you slow down time, it passes very quickly, but perhaps we could, could have a version where, you know, one hour of game time re represents a year, you know, so we could have the, the passing of the four seasons and, you know, do you have a child, is it a boy or a girl, you get to choose its name and then, you know, uh, this just, uh, just sparked my imagination. Mm. Um, yes, anyway, that, that's my piece for this week. Yes, but uh, has, has there ever been a Jane Austen game? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think there's an Anthony Trollope game either. Yeah, but well, that's very interesting. Yes. Thank you very much, Martin. I, I re I'm really looking forward to see this power games in Edwards or anything mm -hmm. like for 53 children as the goal <laughs> in Edwards. <laughs> Thank you. Also, Dominique, could you please sum up this session? <laughs> Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Martin, and thank you to Gauss and that uh, story about um, just uh, Edo period. And also, I think that, you know, it's, that we can dream in Edoverse, actually. Yeah. So now December coming. Um, this is, yeah, the time actually it's very important for us um, because the next Monday, uh, Monthly Insider is coming up. So, uh, that launch part will be, I think, open uh, from uh, from 12 December. And then at this time that um, we are selling Katana NFT and Land NFT in the autumn areas, around 500 Land NFT, no, 5,000 Land NFTs uh, uh, from, the, from the date. But you know, this time only just in selling just through the USDCs. So in this case, that we don't sell it just on the basis of a Japanese yen. Um, that means actually the people has to reach to uh, uh, the cryptos. So uh, that means that you know uh, uh, when when you buy the land NFT, that um, you have to just uh, exchange from the fiat currency. Yeah, if you're just living in Japan, or uh, you have to just exchange from the Japanese yen to something in a cryptocurrency to the USDC. Yeah. And then if you're just, you know, they're living in the States. So you have to just exchange from the US dollars into the USDC uh, through the centralized exchange, as Mr. mentioned. So then probably I think you can using, uh, you can use a DEX decentralized exchange. Yeah, if you just buy, if you have a, yeah, Ethereum or maybe Bitcoin, and then uh, you can just use a, a DEX that, and then you can exchange it from the Ethereum, so maybe a Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency into USDC. And then uh, in your wallets, um, you, uh, you have a USDC, and then uh, on 12 December, uh, you can find the launch parts in uh, Edobus.io, uh, the website. 
And then if you just push things that you connect the wallets and then buy LAN NFT and it, or maybe I think Katana NFTs. So this process is not very simple and uh, uh, not very short. So uh, you have to think, uh, you have to just, uh, I hope that you can just reach to this and then please uh, purchase uh, Katana NFT and also the LAN NFT. And the Katana will be actually upgraded very soon in the future that, you know, they have a, so own different parameters and then you can create a, the, the game like a trading cards. And also uh, uh, the LAN NFTs, this is going to be very, very exciting uh, because uh, you might find that uh, Tokugawa hidden treasure like a Koban in your in your land NFT the ones you buy. But we still don't know the which land that we have some hidden treasure. And at the same time, uh, 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 you uh, if you just register uh, the, in uh, fight rest, uh, just register on your uh, the Ethereum wallet address and then um we will uh, we're now creating that uh, the new website that you can just read to uh, the special uh, uh teaser uh, this is actually the made by uh, Unreal Engine 5 it is a gaming platform and also the metaverse platform um in a, in Edubus. so this is amazingly beautiful and also very realistic uh, in Edo castle so you can see it, yeah, uh, before just in public. So please just uh, register uh, your Ethereum address that uh, to check the the NBR Engine five quality. That is really amazing. So and I hope you know, many people just coming into these uh, things and then to to register your Ethereum address, Ethereum address that. And please just go to Edubus IO and you have we have a some buttons that you can just get into them and then please just in the pick copy and paste and then so get um yeah get the Unreal engine five and eight of us yeah that we yeah you can enjoy it and then um anything else uh we have a uh uh avatar yeah uh, and also we are now uh, creating the avatar nfts and also the uh on the basis of avatar data that we have some of the art NFT, like uh, the portrait of uh, the Shin Sengumi, uh, the heroes. And at this time that you know, we're gonna just announce, as we mentioned before, um, uh, Okito Soshis and also Saito Hajime, uh, two, two Shin Sengumi heroes. And we're gonna just creating um, avatars. And, and also we are just creating the sort of moving portraits and you know, sometimes that in a very still portrait. Uh, we just, um, we just create all uh, materials just into the NFTs, and then uh, at least the avatar will be sold in a January auction in Tokyo. So um, and it is a real auction that you know, we're going to just make it, and that date will be the late January. Um, please just you know prepare for just the getting only one avatar in Edubus, uh, the special heroes, the Soshi Okitas and Hajime uh, Saito. Uh, those two guys are really special. And then uh, if you want to just uh, yeah get it, and then you can just you know, attend the auction. At the same time, you might get uh, their own uh, special katana too uh, for them because uh, in, you know the social Okita has their own his own uh, the katanas and also the yeah Hajime side as well. So uh, please just get those items just for the Edibus and and then once that an Edubus start that you can just use that um, uh, uh, avatars that in uh, walking in the street in Edubus. So um, we have a lot of things coming up um, and then uh, now all our team becomes very busy. And then we are now uh, recruiting uh, more people to join, to create the Edubus. Um, yeah, the marketers and the sales staff and also the engineers, uh, the, every kind of uh, the personals that human resource that we need, please just you know, raise the hands and then, yeah, they join our Edibus team. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Dominique, and thank you everybody for uh, speaking today. We will meet next week. Goodbye.